Hi there, um, I follow quite a few people on YouTube and uh, one channel in particular which is really interesting is run by a guy called uh, Tubal Kane. Uh, that's what he calls himself anyway. Um, otherwise known as Mr Pete 222. Um, he's got a vast array of videos which are really informative and, and interesting in relation to engineering. And uh, the other day I came across a series of videos that he did in relation to making uh, an oscillating engine, otherwise known as a wobbler. Um, and I was, I was really intrigued by the way he went about making this. So um, what I thought was, I'll have a go at making one myself. So this is going to uh, be a number of videos in this series. Um, but let's see how we get on. So Tubal Kane, uh, I don't think he likes doing plans, um, but uh, based upon the videos that he's produced uh, when making this wobbler, um, I've tried to produce some plans based upon his dimensions. So the first page I've got here shows the upright dimensions and the base. Page two shows the dimensions of the flywheel and the crankshaft. And page 3 shows the piston assembly and the cylinder. Now um, I can make these plans available to anybody uh, if they want to contact me through uh, my uh, about email address and I'll, I can send those on. Um, I'll also put um, sort of a five second um, shot on the video of each of those. Now, um, to start off with, I've cut to size three pieces. So that is the base, uh, that is the upright, and that is the cylinder. So uh, I think first of all, we'll start work on the base and the upright. Okay, so I've decided to um, hold the upright onto the base using these uh, M4 cap head screws. So I'll um, drill that to 4mm and then I'll tap that to an M4. Now here I need to drill uh, a hole which is 7 seconds of an inch in diameter and that's for a brass tube that will have an internal diameter of 3 sixteenths of an inch. And this hole here needs to be um, an eighth of an inch in diameter on the inside face but yet on this side that needs to be opened up to 13 sixty-fourths halfway in so effectively 3 sixteenths deep. These other two holes here they'll be drilled um, later on once we've uh, matched up the cylinder. So that's the upright uh, drilled and uh, fitted to the base. So here I'm just uh, milling the side of the cylinder to get it down to around about three quarters of an inch wide. Well at the moment I can't do any more work on the uh, cylinder block because I'm waiting for a half inch reamer to arrive. So I thought I'd start some work on the crankshaft. Um, starting with the um, crank disc 
Now that is a piece of aluminium which is uh, an inch uh, in diameter and 3 sixteenths of an inch wide. So I've got this piece of uh, aluminium bar which is actually an inch in diameter. So on the lathe I'll uh, tidy up the face and the side and then I'll look to uh, ream the centre to 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now uh, I'll, first of all I'll centre drill it then I'll use uh, a 4.5 millimeter drill bit which is um, 0 0.1771 of an inch and uh, then I'll look to ream it uh, to 3 sixteenths which is uh, 0 0.1875 of an inch so that gives me sort of 10 thou tolerance which uh, I think should be okay okay so with this being aluminium uh, I've put one of these uh, special inserts on um, for cutting aluminium so let's see how we get on so I'm just going to face it and uh, tidy up the side first of all So I've already drilled the uh, four and a half millimetre hole about half an inch deep and now I'm going to finish it off with this three sixteenths of an inch reamer. Okay so this is uh, where we get to the uh, hairy scary bit so I need to part this off um, three sixteenths in. Um, so we'll give it a try. I'll be running at about 1200 RPM and I'll be using plenty of WD-40 I think. And it's also worth noting that the uh, carriage and the uh, compound slide is locked as well. So now I'm just going to drill this uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch hole for the um, half inch brass pin. Well that's the crankshaft done, um, but I won't lock tight the pin and the shaft until I come closer to completion. So here I've got uh, a thousand grit wet and dry on the surface plate and I'm just cleaning up this face here. This is the face that will butt up against the upright. 
I'll also smooth the upright in the same way. So this is the cylinder against the upright and the half inch hole for the piston will be drilled at that point which is 3 eighths of an inch from the front and uh, in the centre of the width which is actually about 3 eighths of an inch as well. So my half inch ream has arrived and I'm ready to um, drill the cylinder. I'm going to do this in stages. So I'm going to uh, first of all use a 4.5mm drill bit, then 6, then 10, then 12.5 and um, that will take us up to 0.492 of an inch and uh, that will give me 8 thou to play with for reaming. So hopefully that will be okay. Now the depth I need to go to is 1 and 3 eighths of an inch. Okay so on the mill um, I've put the cylinder into the vise. I'm just double checking that it's at 90 degrees, which it is, and um, on each of my drill bits I've marked the position of uh, 1 and 3 eighths of an inch, so uh, obviously I don't need to go further than that. Okay, so before drilling with the uh, 125 millimeter drill bit, I've decided to remove the chuck and uh, I'm going to try this uh, half inch collet, um, which should be able to accommodate this 125 millimeter drill bit, and then I can use the same collet uh, for the reaming. Now, before reaming, I'm just going to touch the bottom out with this 12 millimeter end mill. Well, I just don't believe it. Um, I bought a half inch collet especially for this reamer and I found that the reamer shaft is 11.6mm. Uh, um, not too sure what that is in, in Imperial. But anyway, um, I fitted it into the 12mm collet so I'm hoping it'll go okay. So I'll be reaming round about 500 revs Well I must say that felt like a bit of a disaster, I'm not too sure how good the reaming went. Um, the reason why I changed to a collet to hold the reamer is because uh, the reamer was too long. Now in hindsight I, sh I should have probably just cut the reamer in half and put it into the uh, chuck. But anyway you live and learn. So now the idea is to drill these holes right through so that one will be one eighth of an inch and this one will be three thirty seconds of an inch now this one the eighth of an inch needs to be exactly perpendicular with this face here because that's the face that will go onto the upright okay so um, this is either brass or steel rod uh, eighth of an inch in diameter so I've cut to length uh, a piece of brass. I've not put a thread on it yet because uh, I just want to go for a test fit. And looking at it, I've just got a slight high spot at the top. Um, 
So I need to think about how to address that. I'm just wondering whether some kind of paste or something might sort that out. Um, but anyway, um, I think that's it for this video. Um, so the next video should show me making the piston and other components. So see you in a bit. Hi there, just a quick update. When I'm wood turning, I use a product called Yorkshire Grit, which gives a superb finish uh, just after sanding and prior to waxing. And it's just a very fine grit paste. So I thought I'd try it on the two components, the cylinder and the upright. And I worked it for about 10 minutes, and the high spots have gone. There's no gap whatsoever. So I'm really happy. Anyway, we'll see you in a bit.